Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hey now, people. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be doing a podcast on a movie that I really love called The Cabin in the Woods. This was a movie I was not expecting to like. I had heard a little bit about it. It had a horror comedy label sort of on it. Wasn't too sure. I was even surprised to find out that it was produced by Josh Whedon and written by him and Drew Goddard, who is the director. The movie came out in 2012. It stars some really cool people. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is in it. Christian Connolly. It has a lot of elements that I was surprised that I liked put together. It's... I'm not going to give away a lot, the plot and the storylines and that stuff, but it is a really unique twist on horror movies. It's got a little bit of everything, and that's part of the plot, which is subverted to a larger plot, which is another plot. It's I, it's great. I love the movie. I was really surprised. I Like I said, I wasn't too keen going in, but once I started getting the gist of the movie. I was blown away. I, I love this movie. It's one of my favorites now. And because I love horror, I was wondering, you know, now looking back, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Josh Whedon. I've always have been. I don't know, to be honest, if that was part of maybe a bias, but I don't think I knew he was involved in this. In any case, it was made for about $30 million and made like $66 million. It was a real, I guess, a success in the horror movie what, genre, but I was surprised it didn't win awards. I had a blast watching this movie. From beginning to end, the way it's plotted, it's got elements that are silly and predictable, and they're predictable for a reason that gets revealed in a really cool way. You're finding surprises and you're making you scratch your head and go, get the fuck out of here. And when it's even further, like, split open and revealed at the end, you're like, this is fucking nuts. This, like, whole thing. And the characters, the, um, so even some of the side characters, the, the ones that are in the periphery, are amazing. There are some guest stars in this that kind of blew me away. But there's a running narrative that's going on, and I'm like so interested in it, and I'm, I'm so interested in the, the the main plot. It it really got me. I think it's a really refreshing take on horror, and to put a little comedy in it, I'm fine with it. The way they did it, because it was brutal, funny, dark. I mean. It had the elements of all your slasher movies and uh, mythology movies all in one. And to give away the plot about it would be too much, I think, but it is a blast. You see elements of every... If you're into horror, there's some element that's going to be revealed in the movie that you're going to go, oh, shit, like, I know what that is. Like, oh, I, like, I wish that was the main focus. So that was the main focus because they're there. They're in a really interesting way that makes me watch the movie over and over. This is a gem. I think everybody should watch it. It's got so many cool elements and just the fun of revisiting a well-done cabin in the woods type movie right in itself the title has so many indicators of what um horror fans would recognize immediately the evil dead the friday the 13th movies and everything that spawned from them uh and you can even get into the wide range of mythology creatures and movies like hellraiser and wolfman and you know, vampires and the Japanese lore and the movies they make, it's just all there, but not overwhelmingly, in my opinion. 
maybe at times it, it seems to be for the characters, but man, so much fun. I recommend this movie so much. I, I watch it as many times as I can. Like I get the impulse every Halloween. It's one of my movies that I go into. And you're not going to find incredible. I think the performances are incredible, but they're, they're stereotype, archetype characters, and they are played extremely well. And the way they give characters the spotlight on who gets uh, focused on and, you know, who kind of, you know, doesn't become prominent and then what's revealed, just the sequence of everything, the the way it's paced, in, really good movie. I think it's a, a, real, a short movie in the sense that it's about, it's 95 minutes, it says, and that's refreshing too. I don't want to sit through three hours of loud bangs and noises and jump scares. This might have it in the right portions, but in no way did it affect me like some other movies do. Uh, but in the long run, I've watched this movie several times every year. It just blows me away. Fun all around. If you don't like it, I, mean, I guess I can understand that to a certain extent. But there are elements in this that are recognizable for almost every genre that uh, connects to horror in, in, in a way. And like I said, that might be from universal mythic monsters to different franchises. It just connects them and weaves them in a really interesting way. And the plot with... Um, uh, I don't want to give too much away. There's a hierarchy of things, like what's going on at the cabin what's going on behind what's going on at the cabin and then kind of what's going on behind that. It's just, I I'm, I would love to see a part two to this. This is one of those movies you want, you want like, Oh my God, I got to see what's next. So I hope this movie is um, revisited in some fashion, even by this creative team or a new team. It could be, it's theme is something that could be picked up on and run with constantly. And they show it in the movie where different, locations around the world type thing where it involves what's going on at this cabin and that might even be giving too much away but watch the cabin in the woods i don't think you'd be disappointed if you're into horror it's a little comedy in it it's stereotypical and predictable for the, in certain parts on purpose and i think it'll blow people's mind so watch it i hope to see everybody soon Bye for now.